Today we're going to be taking a look at a new signature model from Martin Guitars. This is the D28 Rich Robinson, which marks a new step for Martin Guitars. This is not just a commemorative model, but a reproduction of the artist's actual guitar. I'll fill you in. Stick around. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Spring Store, link below for custom swag, and check out our podcast, The Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get your podcasts. So this is, once again, the D28 Rich Robinson, so named for the Black Crows singer-songwriter frontman. And uh, it's a very cool guitar. It's different from what Martin's typically done in the past. Most of the time, they've done a signature model and it's it's a commemorative signature model. It's similar to an artist's guitar. It's got similar specs. Maybe it, like the, a John Lennon or something, it has unique uh, artwork or something to uh, honor that artist. This is a very different thing. This is actually a reproduction of Rich Robinson's 1954 Martin D28 that initially belonged to his father um, and then was later passed on to him that he used for uh, much of his songwriting. And uh, what's interesting about it, inside there's a label, it's numbered, this is number 70, it is signed by Rich, and it designates this as the D28 Rich Robinson, the Appalachian. And that actually goes back to a band that his father was in called the Appalachians. So that's, that's the history behind it. Um, and as a 1954 D28, it has a lot of the specs that you would expect from that with tuners and, and different construction uh, choices. But what's interesting about this guitar, the more that I look at it, the more there are things that stick out that you would expect to see on a vintage instrument. And so there's a lot of just very accurate detail that's gone into it. So let's talk about it and then we'll play it. So of course it's a D28, which means it is a dreadnought guitar, features a spruce top and rosewood back and sides. In this case, that top and back and sides are aged along with the rest of the guitar. Um, and you know what that means is similar to what Fender does with the Relicking or what Gibson does with Murphy Lab, Martin has gone in here and they have aged the guitar and reproduced wear um, blemishes that are on the original model. So you're looking at the top, you can see it's got dings, it's, it's got uh, a, an aged patina to it. It's using a very thin vintage lacquer. Um, and you, know, you have the little dings, you have little bits of checking, all sorts of things that are on, of course, Rich Robinson's actual guitar. Uh, even down to discoloration on the long saddle here and on the bridge pins, which is interesting. From a guitar standpoint, one of the things that he had them do, which is on his guitar as well, is that the wings of the bridge are softened, uh, which acts as both kind of an indication of wear, but it's more comfortable on the hand. So if you're playing the guitar and you're, you're kind of down here, palm muting or anything like that, there's not a, a hard edge that you're running into, which is really nice. Um, the, the mahogany neck is an actual authentic mahogany, genuine mahogany neck. It has its own bits of wear on it, some discoloration uh, that's gone on there from years of playing, kind of wearing through the finish at times. And where I notice maybe some of the most uh, comfortable and age appropriate wear that I would typically see on a guitar of this age is on the frets. So if you, when you play this guitar and you look down, there is this subtle scalloping on the edge of the fretboard along the frets that you would play the most. Um, and it tends to get progressively less as you move up the neck. And then, of course, on the fretboard extension over the soundboard, there's none of that. Um, and that's typical because when you're playing guitar, you know, you're, you're kind of making contact with these points. And over time, if it's your guitar and you're constantly playing it, you tend to do this. Now, I have a 20-year-old guitar that I've played uh, predominantly over those 20 years, and it's done this. Uh, it's my old Taylor 914C, and it feels like, it fits my hand, and the reason is because it, it really does in a respect. I've kind of worn that guitar in from my playing. And so that's a really cool indication. Uh, right after, uh, or right before we started filming, I noticed a little thing here. 
on the heel of the guitar, which is what looks like a filled in uh, screw hole from a strap button. So there's, there's all sorts of like just little touches on this guitar that I find to be very interesting. And if I didn't know that this was, uh, you know, a, a signature model that's been reproduced to replicate Rich Robinson's actual guitar, I would probably think this was a actual 54 D28. It's got those old style tuners uh, that are pretty cool, kind of an, an art deco, thicker appearance to the very back of them. And it's got the rounded headstock um, versus the you know very squared off version, which is typical for that era. Now inside, the bracing is spruce bracing, um, typical. It's a D28 from the early 50s, so it is rearward shifted, non-scalloped uh, X bracing, which typically provides a more kind of focused tone compared to like a, a scalloped HD28 uh, wood in, or, or an older D28 uh, before they got rid of the scalp bracing. The neck is a thick neck, uh, which you would expect on an older Martin, and it features a 111 16th inch nut. I'm very comfortable on this neck, despite the fact that I usually prefer a one and three quarter inch to have a little bit more space. Um, it's not uncomfortable at all, but it is noticeably kind of thicker and rounder uh, with the volute really feeling like it's it's kind of been kind of hand, uh, you know, what's the word, worked in there, uh, you know, all kind of carved by hand. It's it's really, it's really impressive. I, I cannot stress enough how much I would just think, oh, this is a very nice um, uh, example of an early 50s Martin D28. You know, that label inside will let you know that it's something else. And, of course, it is a, a, a numbered series, which means um, there's only going to be so many, and you know exactly which one you have. Now, in regards to the sound, it does not disappoint. I'm going to put this through its paces, playing some of the, the tunes that we typically play so that you can compare it in other videos to other guitars, um, and then I'll talk about what I'm hearing on the other side. So check out the demo.
So there you have it. Hopefully you heard what I heard, but I'm going to describe the tone to you. Um, I already mentioned the playability. This is a, a, a very easy to play guitar. Um, this, and I've played a number of guitars today for videos. This was the nicest sounding, easiest playing by far. It really should be, um, given that it's a, a Martin and, and the price tag that's associated with it. But this is one of the best examples to me of what a vintage Martin tone is. And what that is, is it's, it's a tone that's both uh, blunted on its attack, but very present at the same time. And let me see if I can explain what I mean by that. It's like, it's, a, it's like an orange sound. There's a warmth to it that blends in with other notes. Now, you can have that one of two ways. You can have that in a, what I would think is, is a darker, kind of more reddish toned color. We're talking colors and tones because it's getting weird. But what I mean by that is sometimes you play a guitar that has kind of a blunted attack on the note. Um, but then that's kind of it. And it gives you a, a low-fi kind of tone versus like a high-fi tone. And, and that can be very, very cool. Okay, it can be a very nice kind of dulled attack sound. But this has that kind of rounded off edge to the attack while still having a lot of presence. The note has some zing to it that allows it to really resonate more. So you can play it with a lighter touch. You get a lot of good volume. You get enough note articulation and separation, but the chords are still there as a whole. Um, and that's what leads a lot of people to say, like, Martin has this really warm tone or this really woody tone. It's that sound. It's the roundness of the attack, the presence of the note, the, the fullness of the, the notes reverberating into one another and creating this overall sound. But when you play with a flat pick or you go to individual notes, you still have a lot of separation. So it's, it's dulled, but it's not too dull. You know, and it's bright, but it's not too bright. It's a really, really pleasing uh, sound. Uh, and this is a very resonant guitar. It, it, I don't know if I could say it feels like it's from 1954, but in a lot of ways, it certainly doesn't feel like I just unboxed it for this video. Uh, it feels played in, and it sounds played in. It's uh, very responsive to a light touch. And so for me, I like that. I don't need to dig into the guitar, and it sounds great. So all in all, it's a fantastic guitar. Now, if you are a... Black Crows fan, a Rich Robinson fan, you love his songs. This is kind of a no-brainer. You'd want to have this guitar because you're a fan of the artist, you're a fan of the music, um, and this is effectively like owning his actual guitar that he writes songs on. Um, but even if you're not, this is a really, this is probably one of the best examples that I've seen from Martin in a while of trying to do something that is very vintage. Um, Maybe, yeah, it's basically mid-century, so we're not going back to the 30s in this regard, and those guitars are phenomenal. We've done those reviews on this channel before. But, you know, a mid-century Martin guitar that's produced with just exacting detail, and it really feels and sounds like a mid-century Martin guitar. So hats off to Martin. Um, very fantastic work on this. It's very interesting. How do I feel about the aged approach to it? Um, you know, it works in this particular case, I think in part because it's tied to a specific guitar, um, but it works. If you don't like it, I totally get that as well. Um, and they have, you know, like 30s repros that are, are come out basically like brand new. Um, but this is really cool. I really, I really like it. And I think, uh, you know, fans of, of Rich, fans of the Black Crows or someone wanting something, you know, that's like this guitar without having to go find a, a vintage example that would cost a lot more and probably not be as good um, are going to like this guitar. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, would you like to see Martin do more of this to not just do a, like a commemorative model or something, but to really do more replications of artist guitars? Um, you know, I could see like a Mark Knopfler you know, signature model that is exactly like his guitar. That'd be pretty cool. So let me know in the comments below what you think um, and uh, what you think about this guitar. Now, if you're interested in this model, this is, a, again, the only one we have. It's number 70, um, and it is available on our website. You want to go to alamomusic.com, or you can call, uh, message us on the website, email, or come in and try out this beautiful guitar and see if it works for you, along with all of our other Martins that we have available. At the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing. I always say, 
I love the story that this was Rich's dad's guitar that became his guitar and was so instrumental in the music that he's made. I really think that's what it's all about. I really think, you know, you can have a huge guitar collection, but there's something special about finding that one that always finds its way into your hands to help you make music. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos, and keep coming back for more. I'll see you next time. Thank you.